What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I know I've been pretty quiet over the last few weeks. We all have. Um, once the 2020 season kind of uh, had, was officially cancelled, we all went into hibernation a little bit. There wasn't really any content to make unfortunately, but that does not mean that we were not working in the background. We've been working tirelessly over the last few months uh, to make sure that even though the 2020 season wasn't very good, that the 2021 season is going to be absolutely mega. And that's what this first video is about because we're super excited here in the garage to announce that we officially have our first title sponsor of the 2021 season. I'm absolutely delighted to announce that it's Link PCU. So guys, I said that we have Link ECU on board for this season, absolutely delighted about that. But what does that mean for us? Basically, we are going to be fitting three of these ECUs to the cars. And this is the Link G4X Fury ECU, the absolute top of the range at the moment. And we're absolutely delighted to be putting these ECUs into the car. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So I guess the real question is, why do we need Link ECUs? What benefits do they give us over the traditional standard ECU that comes in a car or what's in our cars at the moment? Um, in mine, uh, Motec ECU, uh, Paz and, and Pexi Power FC and the same with Shane's. So basically, I, want, I brought Shane in here because he knows a hell of a lot more about any of this stuff than I do. Um, I'm absolutely clueless with everything. I know the basics, but that's about it. So basically, Shane, over a stand, bog standard ECU, what would the benefits of an aftermarket ECU give you? So basically, with an ECU like this, um, we're very limited in what can be changed in terms of parameters like fuel tables, ignition tables. They won't have boost control. Um, they're very limited in, in what you can change and what you can what they can monitor actually also as well. So So what you're basically saying is if you bolt on a few aftermarket parts like a turbo, exhaust, intercooler and, and you have a standard ECU, you could, you're very limited in what you can actually change. You're not going to see the real benefits to the to the to those bolt on performance parts unless you get an aftermarket ECU. That's right, like you can do it, and it has been done, but you need an ex like with a lot of cases you need an external boost controller, you need an external um, maybe an air fuel ratio gauge or a wide band lambda kit. Um, so you're saying it gets complicated. It does, the more, the, the and it gets expensive. Expensive. it gets expensive as well because you're, if you're buying external kits to monitor everything, you almost have the price of a good ECU like you have here. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So and then basically then if you go from a standard ECU then. The next step up is kind of our kind of outdated uh, options at the moment, like the Power FC or the Motec ECU. That's probably in my car, 15 years old at this time now. So, what is the update in technology, and what are the benefits that we are going to see now from going from that old technology to the new Link ECU technology? There's actually an awful lot. So, from what we have at the moment, which are what 20, 25 year old ECUs. Mm -hmm. um, in the ECUs we currently have in the car, we can make changes to fuel tables, um, ignition tables. They can do boost control, but um, maybe not so so well. But um, there's no protections in our ECUs at the moment right now. There's nothing at all. Like, um, they don't monitor fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temp, um, mm -hmm. any of this kind of stuff. So like if you have, for example, have a car that's, that's boiling or that there's a major internal malfunction, the ECU doesn't know about it. Really. You're, you're basically re it. You're relying for the, on the driver yeah. to be looking at the yeah. dash and the clocks yeah. that are in front of them. Yeah. And when you're, let's be honest, when we're all driving, we're definitely not yeah. concentrating yeah. on what the gauges are saying. We are looking at the road ahead of us, our competitor beside us, and that's what we need to be able to focus on. So what you're saying is then that these Link ECUs actually have that all built in and those, yeah. those necessary parameters then that you can set them while you're getting the car mapped and they will protect your engine, which, let's be honest, all of our engines are extremely expensive. You definitely do want to protect them. Yeah, basically, yeah. So we can, we can set up parameters to, to either shut the engine off or kill the power if it meets uh, a set oil temperature or oil pressure. Or, or if you're lowering fuel pressure, for example, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll compensate and either, either cut your power or, or cut it off if, if, if it thinks there's going to be a, a major malfunction. Awesome. 
it has the same spec and more than the previous Link Extreme. Mm. And this actually has built in uh, wideband uh, oxygen control, so your, your, your wideband oxygen sensor can actually be controlled in the ECU instead of an external controller like you needed previously. Um, this ECU really does best suit a six cylinder. Um, it will do six ignition drives, eight injector drives, um, and it will do sequential injection and, and direct spark for a six cylinder. So it's absolutely perfect, and it will take two knock sensors and two trigger inputs from a camshaft or, or a crankshaft. So it really is best suited. It is an absolute top range ECU for a six cylinder. So basically, ideal for the RV, RV that's in your car at the moment. Or what, or what, or what you might be fitting in the next couple of weeks. Oh, we won't say that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's still, it, that just because it's perfect for a six cylinder doesn't mean that we can't adapt it then for our yeah. SR20s either, because it, it's actually going to be probably overkill for our SR20s, and it's really yeah. going to be uh, making sure that we get the best out of them. Even a tree rover, anything. Um, these universal wiring ECUs, you can you can literally wire them to any of them. Mm. You know, you can put them to whatever you want. You know. Awesome. So guys, that's basically the on a basic level what these ECUs will give us over the traditional ones that we have. So really, they're a major step up in the technology. Now, after this, we're going to discuss the new dashes and um, the benefits that those give us too. So we just spoke about what the ECU can do and what it can monitor, but that isn't much good if you can't see it as a driver either. Yes, it will stop you and it will warn you and everything like that, and it might even put the car into limp home mode if you have those parameters set, but what you really need to be able to do is to see all this information on a dash too, so that you can then troubleshoot if something is wrong or what is wrong, rather than the car just going into limp home mode and you not knowing. So Link have kindly supplied three of these uh, Strata 1.2 dashes, um, for each of the cars so that we as drivers can see then the parameters that the Link ECU is outputting for us and we can monitor everything from the driver's seat too. Shane, what kind of parameters can these uh, show us as a driver? Basically anything that the ECU can see, we can see. We can see in the driver display. We can configure um, the colours of shift lights um, or RPM and even the lights on the side you can have them to different parameters, different colours at different, different limits and stuff. But uh, I think the biggest thing is, is is simplicity for these for us for wiring. Instead of before having two coolant temp sensors, one for a, a, a gauge or a cluster and one for an ECU, basically now we're wiring everything into the ECU and there's only four wires then completely going into this dash lock. It'll be a live, an art and two can wires. So basically anything we can wire into the ECU, we can monitor on this dash via two wires, which that, is incredible. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So what you're saying is like oil temperature, oil pressure, water temperature, um, as you said, because the, the Furies have uh, lambda control as well, that we can see our, uh, th those as well in the ECU and everything else, and all those, those shift lights as well, as you said, as a driver in front of you, you know that when you're getting close to red line, it's, uh, this dash is going to be telling you about it as well. And I thought as well, this is the motorsport version of this clock, but also I think uh, Link also to uh, street version, which is even cooler. So these um, these lights on the side, they would be uh, what would it be like? Your uh, your turn signals, your oil pressure, your main beam, dip beam for your headlights. That's um, absolutely awesome. So this yeah. this kind of stuff isn't just for the motorsport world. You can also adapt it to have it in a pretty crazy street car, I would say. And also just to note that this is the new seven-inch dash, which is absolutely monstrous compared to the five inch dash that came yeah, before it. We saw it, like it doesn't look much now in my hands, but when you compare the two of them together, it's crazy the size difference. They're barely gonna fit in under our clusters, I think. And it's gonna be an absolutely amazing addition to really bring up these 30 year old cars into the 21st century. Another thing worth mentioning also is that um, some motorsport dashes are just receivers. They can just display information that they receive from the ECU, but these are actually transmitters as well. So if we run out of um, inputs in the ECU for whatever example, if you use an exhaust gas temperature sensors or whatever, if we are out of, of inputs in the ECU, we can actually wire those into the dash and they will go on that same CAN bus line to the ECU. So this will actually receive and transmit as well, no as way. well as just display, so they're actually very clever. Yeah, yeah so a really, yeah. really smart bit of kit. But obviously these are just the main things and these need the inputs too to tell them what, uh, what it is, uh, is actually receiving from the engine. So as we said, spoke about oil temperature, oil pressure and everything like that. So now we are actually going to show you what kind of sensors are 
kind of a bare minimum to have these ECUs running at a respectable level, but also the sensors that we have decided to go with to give our engines uh, the biggest chance of surviving if there is ever a catastrophic failure. So, so as I said, an ECU is absolutely no good without send sensors sending it that information that it requires to run the engine correctly. So on one side of the table here, we have the sensors that are kind of, we recommend at an al almost bare minimum. And on this side of the table then, I have the sensors that we have also spec for the cars to really, as I said, give it this best opportunity to uh, prevent a catastrophic failure. So starting off with the first one, water temperature sensor. Obviously, it's kind of self-explanatory, Shane. Yeah, it just basically screws into your inlet manifold just to tell you what the cool temperature is in the circuit. And is this a direct replacement for the standard one? Yeah, for, for our Nissan's anyway, so for the SR20 and the RB25, that's a direct replacement for the two-wire sensor that's in there at the moment in the manifold, so that, awesome. one, that would go straight in. So it makes it really convenient actually for fitting, you're not trying to uh, use adapters or anything like yeah. that. Then, next one, air temperature sensor. Again, kind of self-explanatory, but like not something that a standard road car would be really using too much. Like Any car that basically does not have an airflow meter does need an intake air temperature sensor to run and then the sensor. Yeah, so as you've seen, like um, airflow meters have been kind of getting an outdated technology. Luckily, in my 180, my, mine has been gone, but a few years since uh, I have upgraded to the Motec. But you've seen like limitations mm -hmm. in your cars as well. Especially running, trying to run big horsepower with those old airflow meters. The, the, as we all know, the most common airflow meter that everybody uses is the Z32, um, which I maxed out the last time on the dyno at 500 horsepower. The, so you can you actually can't go any more horsepower without uh, getting rid of that. You could, but you'd be your tuner would be mapping blind. They wouldn't know what's happening in terms of airflow and stuff. So it, it would be ridiculous. To Again, putting your engine it. at risk. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Practice, yeah. The next one then, map sensor. Map sensor, yeah. So that works. That works alongside your intake air temperature sensor. So when we work, when we when we remove the airflow meter, we'll have to add an IAT and your and your and your, your map, map sensor. sensor yeah. So they're 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 both basically working in tandem then to get to tell the ECU what it needs to coming in yeah. from from ambient air, I guess. And it's worth saying we got the four bar map sensor. I think you can also get three bar map sensors and stuff, but. In, in the case of an overboost, I think we, we got the higher rating map sensor just to see the, the extent of what's happening there. Awesome, yeah, definite, yeah. definitely better when you're buying these sensors to go a little bit overkill if you can, get the higher up units, it might end up saving your engine a little bit further down the line. So, then to go on to the optional extras, I guess you'd call it, that we also went with and uh, yeah, I think there's a, a nice host of them here. So the first one that I'm going to pick up here is a boost control solenoid. Obviously, like you can go off of spring pressure. I know that off the wastegate, you can set like a one bar, or uh, one point five bar spring, but then you don't have variable control off that. So it's just a spring controlling it. This yeah, basically changes that. You, you can't vary your your duty on your boost control to bring it in, bring in the boost harder, or quicker, and stuff like that. Um, plus, it just simplifies everything again with vacuum pipes and wiring versus running um, an external boost controller. Uh, you're running just you're running more vacuums and more wiring, just stuff that you don't need. When the ECU can control it, may as well let it control it. You know? And then even if you do have, we'll say, a one bar uh, wastegate in your in your wastegate, um, this can actually then send it to higher boost levels. Then is that correct? Higher or, or lower? Yeah, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head, but I think it's about half a bar either side of your spring pressure. I might be wrong on that, but it's 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 in around that. Awesome. I think some people almost go to double. You can go to the same a bar above or below. But I think um, in around half a bar is, is, is good and safe. I think. Awesome, so definitely a lot of control for your boost levels as well with this. And of course, it's good to mention then that what we will be using in these cars as well is a switch for high low boost yeah. as well. So we'll say if my car, it re it's really peaky with its power levels, and if you run, if, especially if you're running it on high boost, like at the moment I'm running 1.4 bar and it comes on really aggressively. So with this sunlight you can actually just run it on spring pressure which is about 0.8 of a bar at the moment. We say if it's raining or it's wet and it's a lot more controllable of the curve then for it to come on and it's uh, a lot easier then as a driver to control the, the throttle and uh, modulate it as well. It's not automatically just going spinning up the rear wheels and you have no control then. Or possibly up against a slower car in a battle, which is a big issue in competition. Very good point as well, yeah, very good yeah. point. It's a, if you come up against a much, uh, someone with much slower pace, you're able to yeah. reduce that boost setting, and yeah. you're, you're uh, effectively running with less power, it makes it a bit yeah. easier to control. Then, the next setting, the next sensor, pressure sensor. Now this, yeah. I know, and I don't know much, but this is a bit of a smart sensor because it can do two different kinds. 
fuel, it'll do fuel pressure and oil pressure. So it's the same sensor yeah. for both of them then. Yeah. And uh, yeah, really, really nice to have it. Like we just took um, our little analog gauges out of our yeah. fuel pressures. I know and this is going to do it and it's going to display it to the dash as well, which is awesome, isn't it? Yes, and it's worth saying it, it, it has a range of zero to 10 bar, which well, is quite huge. Because like, a lot of the aftermarket gauges only go to like seven bar. Yes. So like a lot of um, built engines with tight bearing clearances will have a, that oil pressure and higher from a cold start. So you do often wonder you could have seven plus, it could be a 10 or 12 bar. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know yeah, that. Yeah, so that's, no, that's, that's absolutely awesome. And again, it goes back to my point, buy a quality gauge or a quality sensor and you will know that you, you will, it's definitely going to help you yeah, uh, in sure. the future at some point. Next one, knock. I'm going to be honest, I have absolutely Fair. no idea about knock. I don't understand it. Shane, can you give a really knock, quick um, basic a explanation? The basic explanation is it's detonation, it's pre-ignition. So your combustion is happening at the wrong time in the cylinder, generally before the piston reaches CDC, um, which is very, it's fatal for your engine. It's, it's the biggest killer for, for even damage to heads or, or crankshaft or conrad bearings and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, Knock. A lot of people don't run knock sensors, but I, I do think it's critical. Um, it could detect um, a, a Conrad bearing or a slight timing issue, or it could pick up on something very early, and you could save your engine in the long run having these. Mm. Um, it's also worth saying I have two with the six in there, and you only have one. And am I right in saying that a tuner actually listens to knock in yeah. his headphones when he's tuning? Yeah, so exactly that. So obviously you can monitor that constantly as we're driving. That's absolutely yeah. crazy. Like, so yeah. you don't need a tuner there. Your ECU is able yeah. to listen Basically, to that. Basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen to that. So yeah. obviously the tuner, you need a good tuner to set it up initially, I'm guessing. Yeah. And then after that, then the ECU knows, okay, this is going out of spec or it's still in spec. And it can tell you they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the biggest box for last, I said the link, the Fury had an extra, set, an extra um, feature that the Extreme didn't. And this is what it's all about, yeah? Yeah, so it's the LSU 4.9. There's two versions. There's an LSU 4.9 and a 4.7. This is the newest 4.9. I'm, I'm certain that the Fury actually needs the 4.9. I'm not sure if we're running the 4.7, but if we can get the 4.9, we may as well get the 4.9. Get Absolutely. the best we can while we can. So this will basically this will monitor our air fuel ratios as the yeah. cars are running. So your standard lambda sensor is very limited in what it can see off your your stoichiometric um, air fuel ratio, which is fourteen point seven to one. So if your car goes rich or lean, a normal lambda sensor really can't monitor it only under a small window. It's either above or below the window. You don't know how much, but these have a, a, a very broad range of what they can what they can monitor in terms of air fuel ratio. So again, for tuning and for for reliability, um, the ECU can monitor it constantly, and it will do closed loop um, control. So, if there is something happening, if it's sensing too much or too little fuel in the exhaust, it will make changes to fuel and ignition to compensate. So, it's actually yeah. changing the map on yeah. the fly almost because yeah. it has this input. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, sure. This is what tuners uh, screw into your exhaust anyway, which is what most people just screw in for tuning and take it out again. Yeah. But at least now we can leave it in, and the ECU can constantly close loop, make changes to fueling and ignition to suit the current. Air fuel ratios we have and the lambda reading in, in the exhaust versus what it was just so one yeah day. benefit from that is like um, if it was a really cold day um, when we were actually running and it was a hot day when it was mapped the ECU would be able to kind of make those changes like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you're exactly. not just setting it to predetermined fuel and ignition and hoping that all conditions would be the same every day in your outlet. Like, Which is very important yeah. for Ireland because at yeah. the moment we're sitting in the shed and it's about six degrees and yeah. uh, we could be up to Mandela in the middle of June or July and it could be nearly peaking at 30. So uh, yeah. definitely very important to have that input into the ECU and something that none of our cars have at the moment. Yeah. So guys, that's a very brief description of all of these sensors. Obviously, we're going to go into more detail when they're all fit into, car, but that, into the cars, but that obviously brings me on to my next point. We have to get all these fit into the cars. Um, I definitely can't do it, Shane might have some hope, um, but yeah, we need a professional to be able to do this for us and create bespoke wiring rooms for all three cars. And make sure that you hold on and watch the next video where we will actually be releasing that next sponsor in the line that's going to be fitting all this Link ECU stuff and uh, also the bespoke wiring rooms. You're really not going to want to miss this if you're a car nut because I've seen them already. They're absolutely beautiful. Guys, thanks so, so much for watching. Um, really happy to have Link on board again for this season. Their technology is absolutely amazing and everything looks so beautiful as well. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we will check you in the next episode.